Hello everyone, I hope this video finds you well. This is my first YouTube video which will function as a teaser trailer for a Conlang showcase video to come later. Because I have not yet decided what its endonym will be, the showcase language has the working title Alpine Neptune, hence the unusual name for this video. Firstly, I should mention and thank Rothaniel from Bibliridian's Discord server who suggested I make this showcase, so thanks. I've had this idea knocking about in my head for a while, but Rothaniel's comment crystallised my resolve to actually make this video. So let's jump right in with a conlanging tradition, a slightly edited extract from the Tower of Babel story. This is the phonological inventory of Alpine Neptune. Worth noting are the voiceless nasals, the ejectives, the voiceless trill, and the series of labialized and palatalized sounds. There is a simple tone system, wherein tones only occur on stressed syllables, like in Mohawk. Here is an example of a tonal minimal pair. The first, Sinar, we've seen already, and means Shinar, the place from the Bible. The second, Sinar, means watering hole. The phonotactics are quite complex, so I won't get into them here. After all, this is only a teaser video. Now on to grammar. Like most languages, Alpine Neptune has nouns. Nouns in Alpine Neptune fall into eight classes, numbered with Roman numerals and arranged in an animacy hierarchy like so. You'll notice too there are plural classes. This is for things that occur in groups, or for groups of things that behave like single entities. For humans, this might be a committee. For animals, a school of fish. For inanimates, leaves on a tree. Nouns also have a minimal case system. Broadly speaking, nouns are unmarked in expected situations and marked elsewhere. Check out this table. A tick means the form is marked, while a dash means unmarked. All nouns are unmarked when they are the subject of an intransitive verb. Classes 1 through 4, the humans and animates, we expect to be doing things, so they are unmarked when they are agents and marked elsewhere. Inanimate things, meanwhile, are expected to have things done to them, so are unmarked when they are patients, but are marked for other roles. Places rarely do things and rarely have things done to them, but are where stuff happens, so are unmarked for the locative. Abstractions rarely do things, nor have things done to them, nor are where things usually take place, but can often describe the manner in which a thing is done, and thus are unmarked for what I've called the instrumental case, for simplicity's sake. An entirely unintentional corollary of this mark when unexpected system is that the language's alignment is all over the place. Classes 1 through 4 are nominative accusative, meaning the subject and agent are marked the same while the patient is marked differently. Classes 5 and 6 are ergative absolutive, meaning the subject and patient are marked the same while the agent is marked differently, and classes 7 and 8 are tripartite, meaning all three of the subject, agent and patient have separate markings. I think this is cool, and leads on to some funky clause on clause business in the syntax. Now we come on to verbs, which, like most languages, Alpine Neptune has. Verbs exhibit what's called polypersonal marking, which means that they agree not only with the agent of a transitive action, but also the patient, or in more conventional terminology, the verbs agree with both subjects and objects. However, one constraint I put into the language, which transpired to be less difficult to evolve than I had imagined, was that each verb can only agree with two arguments at once. This polypersonal agreement agrees with the noun class of the arguments. There is no morphological tense nor aspect marking, and as such these have to be expressed using periphrastic constructions or context. I'm a minimalist. Verbs do, however, have a morphological distinction between their volitional form and non-volitional form. English tends to do this by having separate lexical items, but in Alpine Neptune, each of the pairs you see here would be the same verb, albeit in one of the two forms. Verbs, and therefore adjectives as well, which pattern like stative verbs, also exhibit what I've called a three-way magnitude pattern. Each verb can either be neutral, augmentative, or diminutive, but don't be fooled by the labels. The augmentative not only covers simply more of an action, it also implies that the action has a culturally undesirable connotation, and or is done in a once-off fashion. Meanwhile, the diminutive covers not only smaller versions of actions, but contains connotations of the action being culturally desirable, and or done in iterations over time. 
Now on to syntax. Naturally, syntax is a huge topic, but here are some basic flavour road signs. Firstly, the language has a default word order of SOV, that is, subject, object, verb, like Japanese or Turkish or half the languages on the planet. However, word order is actually free, thanks to the mix of polypersonal agreement and case marking. Nevertheless, free word order doesn't mean word order is irrelevant. Word order is governed by salience, where the most emphasised part of an utterance occur near the end of the utterance, and arguments occurring before a verb are taken to be mutually known between speaker and listener. Look at these examples. Pause here if you like, as I'm moving swiftly onwards. Alpine Neptune also features noun incorporation, and there are some fun syntactic implications of its mixed alignment I'll get into another time. Lastly, I thought I'd mention some other extras. There's a special register for hunting that uses evidentials. Time is perceived to flow upwards. Verbs of motion are obligatorily marked for cardinality, that is to say, whether or not the motion is to the north, south, east or west. There is a base 20 number system, because counting is fun using your fingers and your toes, and a system of sound symbolism that allows you to make single syllables containing information about how wet or dry, how bright or dark, and or how hot or cold something is. And that's it. I look forward to seeing you next time. If you have any questions about Alpine Neptune, feel free to message me. See details below. In the meantime, don't like and don't subscribe.